Hello everyone and welcome to this hashtag RTA underscore VS that is real time anatomy video series. This is the second video in the series and today we will be talking about this section of the axilla. Well, few years back there was a question asked in the AIMS exam also in which the structures of the axilla has to be identified in the transfer section. As I said earlier also that it's a bit easy to identify the structures when you see them from the anterior or posterior view but it gets a bit difficult when you have to identify them in the transfer section. And especially when it is a real-time transverse section because it looks like all muscles are mixed up, it's a bit difficult to identify the nerves and blood vessels. So we need to go with certain hints which are there inside. So starting off, uh, this is the transverse section of the axilla in which if I again go with the side orientation, in this section guys, this is the medial. Well, this is the medial side because that's a part of the rib you're looking at here, so that is a medial side. And this is the lateral side. Well, this is lateral side because you can see the section of the humerus. Look at this. That is a humerus bone here, which is telling me that is a lateral side. So I can see anterior and posterior. Now, even before identifying any muscle or anything in that, when you look at the section of the axilla, to identify what is anterior and what is posterior in that, you can see the number of muscles there. If you see the anterior axillary fold and the muscle which we have anteriorly is pectoralis major and pectoralis minor. But when you see at the back, the muscle coming from the scapula, we not only have the muscle coming from the costal surface of scapula, we also have the muscle from the dorsal surface of scapula. That's why the amount of muscle that you will see on the posterior axillary fold and even behind that will be much, much more than the anterior side. So look at this thick um, coat of a muscle here and that tells you these are the muscles of the scapular region and these are the muscles of the anterior or pectoral region. This is the anterior aspect and this here is the posterior aspect of this image. The amount of muscle that could be one simple hint to identify where you're looking at whether it is anterior or posterior in the transverse section of the axilla. Now guys, this inside here, this is the... Uh, these are the contents of the axilla that you see. And before we go to the content, let's look into the wall and try to identify the structures in the wall. Well, if this is a rib cage present here, obviously the muscle which is present on the rib cage attached to the first eight rib, those eight digitation are of serratus anterior muscle. This is the serratus anterior muscle which is present toward the medial side. It is also forming the medial wall of the axilla. Look at the two muscles anteriorly. Now if you look at these two muscles, let me just mark them. The muscle which you see anteriorly, this one, coming from the rib cage, and this muscle goes all the way toward the humerus, attached to the lateral lip of the bicipital groove, and this muscle is the pectoralis major muscle. That muscle is pectoralis major muscle. As I said, look at the muscle coming from the rib cage. It originates from the rib cage and it is going all the way to the humerus. That is pectoralis major muscle. The muscle that you see behind pectoralis major. Well, we know that behind pectoralis major is pectoralis minor. But the other hint you can see here, the muscle is starting from the rib cage only. That's what the pectoralis minor will do, arising from the third or fourth rib. And you will see the muscle is not reaching to the humerus. It is not running toward the humerus because ultimately the insertion of pectoralis minor is to the coracoid process. The section is way below the coracoid process because you can see the shaft of the humerus. That's why you cannot appreciate the insertion point of the pectoralis minor. Pectoralis minor goes like this to the coracoid process and the section is close to the shaft of the humerus or you can say close to the surgical neck of the humerus. That is why that muscle present behind here is a pectoralis minor muscle. So pectoralis major and pectoralis minor, the two muscle forming the anterior axillary fold or the anterior wall of the axilla. Coming to the posterior aspect of this, uh, of this uh, image, now it's a bit difficult to identify the scapula in this because it is a cross section and the scapula seems to be very, very thin in the cross section. So if I just try to enlarge this picture and try to show you that, guys, can, can you see that bone here in between? Look at this. That is a scapula bone. So this is the scapula that you see here. And if this is the scapula, then obviously the only muscle that you see, the huge muscle coming from the subscapular fossa, that is subscapularis muscle. This muscle is subscapularis. Look at this big muscle here. 
This is all subscapularis muscle. The muscle is subscapularis. Okay. Subscapularis muscle is also forming the posterior wall of the axilla that is there. Now, what are the muscles which are present behind the subscapularis or you can say behind this scapula on the posterior surface of scapula? On the posterior surface of scapula, we have again supraspinatus is there, infraspinatus is there, but which out of the two will be here? Once again, it's again a common sense. Now think about it. We said, if let us say this is the uh, scapula here and that's the acromion process and here is the shaft of the humerus. Because we are taking the section from the surgical neck or you can say that from the close to the shaft of the humerus, so that section will continue from the body of the scapula below the acromion process. And we know below the acromion process what muscle will be seen? That will be the infraspinatus. Above it will be supraspinatus, below is infraspinatus. So the muscle that you see behind this scapula is the infraspinatus muscle. This muscle here is the infraspinatus. not counted in the posterior wall of the axilla because it is present behind the scapula but for the identification the muscle that you see in front of the scapula that is from the subscapular fossa is subscapularis and the muscle that is seen from the dorsal surface of scapula but below the acromion process that is the infraspinatus muscle. The one muscle which I'm sure this is not posing a difficulty to identify look at this mus big muscle here forming the shoulder contour and that is the deltoid muscle. Of course, this is the deltoid muscle. The muscle is deltoid. Obviously, the deltoid muscle will come from the acromion process and that will also insert onto the deltoid tuberosity on the lateral side of the shaft of the humerus. There is one more important muscle here to be identified apart from pectoralis major, minor, serratus anterior, infraspinatal, subscapularis and deltoid and look at this guys, this muscle which is present here. Please understand what muscle is this and how will you identify it. First of all, the muscle is seen on the medial side of the shaft of the humerus. And you can see it is also in the lateral side of axilla. If this is axilla, it is toward the lateral side of axilla, but to the medial side of the humerus. Again, if you look at the costal surface of the scapula, and here is the humerus, the muscle which is coming from the coracoid process and inserting to the medial side of the shaft of the humerus that is coracobrachialis muscle. And once again because the section is somewhere from here, so the muscle that you will see running along the shaft of the humerus, that muscle on the medial side will be the coracobrachialis. So this muscle here is the coracobrachialis muscle that is the coracobrachialis also present in the lateral part or forming the lateral wall of the axilla. So these two pectoralis major and minor, the two main muscle forming the anterior wall. The main muscle on the posterior wall of axilla that is subscapularis. Medially we have serratus anterior, the muscle that you see covering the rib cage from the outer aspect. And laterally you see the coracobrachialis muscle because it is running on the medial side of the shaft of the humerus and it is attached exactly opposite to the deltoid tuberosity on the medial side. Deltoid tuberosity is on the lateral side, it inserts onto the medial side. Now if I enlarge this picture and now well, if I try to identify the structures inside the axilla, now look at this guys, what, what is there inside? Now, this is the artery and here are the veins. There is the axillary vein, this could be one of the tributary to axillary vein only. And that again makes sense because when you see axillary artery and axillary vein in, in, in the axilla, the axillary vein relation is on the medial side of the artery. Along the entire extent of axillary artery, the one medial relation which is constant, even for the first part, second part or for the third part of the axillary artery is the axillary vein which runs on the medial side of the artery. So obviously in this section you already know what is lateral, what is medial. So this is laterally placed, it is the artery and medial place that is a vein. If you're not able to identify by the thickness of the wall, by the relation you can make out that lateral one is the artery and medial one is the vein. And let me just rub this color here so that we can see some nerves inside. Although it's not easy to identify the nerves in here, but if I try to enlarge this even more, now around this artery, axillary artery, I hope you can recognize, you can see some nerves over there. Now these nerves are coming from the trunks or from the cords of the brachial plexus. 
you have a nerve here present, there's a nerve here, you cannot see a nerve here, and you can see a nerve here as well. There are some four nerves we can see in this section. It's not important to identify these nerves at this point because it's not the purely cord we are looking at. We are looking at the branches coming out of the cord as well. So it's not easy to identify the nerve in that way. But yes, obviously on the medial side, we'll have a medial cord of brachial plexus, more laterally will be the lateral cord, and behind, that will be the posterior cord of brachial plexus. So this is either the posterior cord or this is the main branch coming from the posterior cord that is the radial nerve. So this is about the section of the axilla. Once again, if I just give a quick recap on this, we said the important thing to note, first of all, is to see that in every transverse section, the first challenge is to see the anterior, posterior, medial, and lateral. So anteriorly here, Look at the, the thickness of the muscle here, the pectoralis major and minor, they are not uh, forming the, uh, it is, they are not as thick as this muscle, as thick we see it on the posterior side. So we have a huge muscle present on the posterior side because we can see the muscle of the anterior part of the scapula as well as posterior. The muscle on the medial side is the one which is attached on the outer surface of the rib cage. That's why you see this curvature as well, that is serratus anterior muscle on the rib cage. Laterally, you can see the humerus and the muscle which is running along the shaft of the humerus, medial side of the shaft of the humerus, is no other muscle than coracobrachialis. Content, we saw we have this uh, axillary artery toward the lateral side, axillary vein toward the medial side, and the axillary artery will be seen surrounded by the cords and the branches coming from the cords of the brachial plexus. So this is the transverse section of the axilla. I hope if you get this real-time section in the exam, you probably will be able to identify the structures in it.